This is QDX digital transceiver running FT8 mode at the moment. Transceiver is wired for 9 volts power supply and this is 12 volts power supply based on lithium ion battery pack featuring at the moment 12.4 volts being actually fully charged. And here's an orange blob in between. What's inside? How does it work? And how effective it is? Stay tuned and I'll tell you what. Hello guys, this is Linus Lima Yankee 2 Hotel. Today this short video is about one dilemma which you face with as soon as you buy the QDX digital transceiver from the QRP Labs company and you open up the assembly manual. Important operation of QDX at more than 6 watts power out of it is not recommended and here you are advised to choose which operating voltage you gonna use you want to use with your QDX transceiver. The output transformer could be wound in two ways you wind it for 9 volt power supply or you wind it for 12 volt power supply and we have to choose in between of these two alternatives. That's the dilemma. Originally it's designed for 9 volts power supply, but of course uh, it offers you an, another option, uh, an alternative of using 12 volts or 13.8 volts, the traditional standard ham radio uh, power supply voltage. What's the difference really, 9 or 12 volts? Normally, uh, I know that many people choosing 12 volts option because they have 13.8 volt power supplies, fixed power supplies in their shacks and it's convenient because all the equipment is fed from the same power supply or from the same 13.8 volts. But uh, if you are like me and I am going to go outdoors with my QDX uh, digital transceiver uh, to make a short uh, prepping exercise in digital modes, which I think it's very important in these, in these times we live in now, then I've decided to go for 9 volts power supply. Let's take a look at the QRP Labs chart showing the transceivers power output. Here the blue line shows 12 volt uh, power supply and the red line shows, uh, shows uh, 9 volt power supply. Uh, so and we can see that if you run the transceiver of 13.8 volts power supply then it's all good. You're getting more than 5 watts of uh, power output. Actually solid 5 watts. And that's fine. Is if, if, if this is your purpose to operate from your shack, always using 13.8 fixed power supply, then I think you gotta go for that. Because it's less trouble and it's more convenient. But if you want to have it more, um, so to say, more wide choice of your power supply power supply voltages and in many cases you're just forced to to have a power supply which you have like you know it could be that in the emergency situation you only got this kind of a nine volt alkaline battery cell which i could which i designed with the with the anderson power pulse plug and I could easily connect this uh, just straight to my transceiver, to the QDX transceiver. And I certainly would run for some certain period of time, being able maybe to send a message or two. This is important. Or if I run, for instance, uh, off, uh, let's say, my favorite power, power supply, my power bank, homemade lithium ion 3.4 amp hours uh, battery pack. Uh, when fully charged lithium ion battery packs uh, are starting with a with a like uh, 12.6 volts fully charged 
And then let's take a look at the chart provided by the QRP Labs. So we see that um, at the 12 volts of power supply with a transformer wound for 12 volts, we only getting around 4 watts of output. I think this is important because uh, 1 watt in QRP, in the field, using uh, moderate, modest antennas is a lot of difference, in my opinion. Uh, so, and then, with the time you spend operating, uh, your battery decreases further on. So it discharges further on to 10, to 11, to 10. If you got uh, 11 volts from the, for, for, and you are wired for 12 volt um, power transformer, then you only have 3 or 3.5 watts. At 10 volts, you're only getting less than 3 watts of power output, maybe 2.5 or something like that. Uh, at 9 volts, you would only get 2 watts of power. So that's, that's no good. You are running uh, very inefficiently in this way with your QDX um, uh, digital transceiver. At the same time, if you wire the output transformer for 9 volts power supply, uh, you have a very wide range of voltages where you still get 5 watts of uh, power output or more. So imagine, uh, so if I start at 12 volts with uh, this battery pack and uh, feed directly uh, 12 volts to the into the transceiver, I would get about 8 watts of output power. That's a lot and this is not recommended and I also do not recommend you to run 12 volts with your output uh, transformer being wired for 9 volts. This might last maybe for some 10 or 15 or 20 seconds uh, before you get your final transistors fried. Uh, to solve this problem, you need to have something like, you know, DC to DC converter or step down buck converter. So after some searching, I've come up uh, with this DC to DC down converter, which allows uh, any any voltage from 4.5 to 28 volts to down convert into any voltage from 0 0.8 to 20 volts. So and allowing at the same time maximum power output current up to 3 amps. We don't need 3 amps with the QDX digital transceiver. We only need maximum one amp of uh, power current because the QDX digital transceiver releases five watts at nine volts of, of power supply at one amp only. So this is very efficient uh, design. It's really a teeny tiny piece of uh, converter uh, and it only measures like uh, a bit more than 18 millimeters by 16 millimeters and being very compact uh, it allows for using it in the field easily it doesn't take much space in your backpack so to say arrangement and um, that's the, the that's the reason why i chose this uh, it does make no hush no rf so to say hum or interference the only thing I needed to do, I needed to design a tiny box for this down converter. And of course, the 3D printing is the way to go. Voila. Finished. Voila, here is the teeny tiny box for the teeny tiny down converter. I've designed the teeny tiny box myself on the on shape and I've printed it on my Prusa Mini Plus 3D printer. Congratulations to myself. So the box is really tiny, 
and because the, uh, the the board is really tiny so it's uh, the, the box measuring 22 millimeters by 32 millimeters the board very tightly fits into the box it doesn't move sideways if you want to have it really tiny so i would advise uh, to solder wires up from the upper side not from the bottom but from the upper side uh, to keep uh, the board flat with the with the bottom of the box so if you solder it uh, up from the from uh, from the bottom then you would have a millimeter or two probably higher in the height but then you have to decide another box uh, being a little bit higher uh, the uh, tiny hole should correspond uh, with this uh, potentiometer tiny potentiometer which uh, uh, is used to regulate the output voltage the hole goes over over the potentiometer use uh, a tiny screwdriver and you can uh, adjust the voltage without disassembling the box with this installation I am free to choose great variety of power supply voltages available in the field. So I can uh, I can start with uh, with 12.6 from from my uh, lithium ion ion battery. I could start from my car battery running at 14 volts. I could start and run directly from my QRP solar. Uh, solar panel um, so which uh, produces like 18 volts probably this DC to DC down converter takes anything from 28 volts and uh, makes it down to 9 volts with this great variety of voltages I'm always able to get 5 to 6 watts output of my QDX transceiver that's what I really want. That's a stability and versatility I really want. So the dilemma of power supply in QDX digital transceiver is solved for me. Let me know in the comment section how is it going for you. Until now, thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing and see you next time. Peace for Ukraine, 73. This is Linus, Lima Yankee 2, Hotel.